Hey, we're talking about today leadership in the church. Now, again, we need great leaders outside of the church, but you know, we really need them also in the church. And in this session, we want to focus our attention on, on a church leader, but whether it's a pastor, five-fold ministry gift leader, and themselves as, as well as their relationship with God. You know, pastors can be, uh, or you know, they're like any other person. Christian leaders are like any other person. They have their own wants and needs and desires and issues. You know, none of us are perfect. That's for certain. But I've seen that many uh, spiritual leaders can get kind of hung up in feeding themselves in ways that are not healthy. Uh, and this is true for anyone involved in life in general. But, you know, they can be addicted to things like food and television and or even the anointing, the, the presence of God. I mean, they can get addicted, as it were, to meeting their needs in a way that's probably less healthy than what it should be. We all need to eat. We all need to, to enjoy life. But at the same time, sometimes we can use uh, substitutes for really what is healthy and positive in our life. <clears throat> a lot of leaders, they love that adrenaline rush and they love it when people tell them how great they are and they go deeply depressed sometimes when they get some bit of criticism. And Because we know, listen, the, the fact is roasted pastor is something that happens almost every Sunday afternoon. I don't know why he said it this way, why she said it that way, etc. And that can be very, very painful for a spiritual leader. And so it's important to be able to make sure that your relationship with God, your relationship with others, relationship with yourself, with your own family, are really strongly grounded and secure in the Word of God and God's purposes. So we're going to, in, in this session, we're going to talk a little bit about really the self and, and our relationship with God individually. You know, the calling of God is a very high calling. I mean, it's, you know, I look back on my own life, on my own calling, and sometimes I wonder, why would God choose someone like me? But, you know, he chooses whom he chooses. And, you know, our, our called, gifted, and anointed leaders within local church life, they need support, they need care. But... Really, we as leaders need to be grateful and perhaps always in awe that God has chosen us for his purpose. We are thus a representative of God. Now, we don't speak ex cathedra. We don't speak as, you know, as though we are canon and our, we're scripture or anything. No, no, we're human. But we do speak under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We need to lead by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, according to the principles of God's Word. Because we want to be a good example. Again, a good example does not necessarily mean that your personality is all that and a bag of chips. You may have your own quirks, but if it's not sin, it's not a problem, really, from God's view. We still represent Him in hopefully living with the fruit of the Holy Spirit and operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit for the glory of God and for the benefit of others. You know, a, a really, to be a good spiritual leader, you recognize you are a gift. <laughs> you may not be the gift. Jesus is the gift. But we are a gift, a gift to the body of Christ. And as such, we are going to be used. Gifts are to be used. And we're going to be used by people. I remember years ago praying, oh God, use me. And then he sent people into my life and I've been used ever since. And so have you. And that's what happens with every leader. But we must remember that we are called. We're not hired. Now, someone may have hired you and may be paying your salary, but ultimately we're called and we're called to lead. We're called to preach. We're called to teach whatever it is. If our ministry is more prophetic, we're called, called by God. And thus, whether we get paid or not, we still must fulfill the call. But it's always nice if you are called. And if you are hired by someone, you have a responsibility to them. You hopefully have a job description that you're doing the best you can to fulfill. But anyway, we are called, not hired. As such, we also must have a, you know, in our spiritual life, we need to hear from God. 
And I know people assume that for a pastor, for a spiritual leader, oh, it's easy to hear from God. Or for someone that's more prophetic or apostolic, oh, of course it's easy for them to hear from God. Well, it is, I guess, easy. I assume God is talking all the time, but sometimes heaven is silent and we don't always hear things clearly. You know, <laughs> sometimes we have our own issues, but we need to be able to recognize that we do have the ability to hear from God and God will speak because God is more concerned, first of all, about his relationship with us as leaders and secondly, about the people that we serve than what we are. So we're to shepherd the people, we're to be an example to the people, we're to serve the people, we're to be a minister, a servant of God. I mean, all of those are a part of our relationship that we have with God and with others. And as leaders, we need to be careful to tend to these things to the best of our ability. And I think that starts probably for most of us with the with how we get up in the morning. I mean, I know a lot of leaders because they're carrying the pressure of the day-to-day -day operations of a 501c3 ministry or whatever, that uh, they're a little tired, they're a little grumpy, or if they've had a little bit of a tiff with their bride or their husband or their kids. I mean, we're human. But it's good to start, I think, every day with acknowledging that God is good, that God is here, that God is with us, and that nothing that we face is going to be so great that we can't handle it with God's help. <laughs> We're dependent upon Him. I think one of the things that's so important, and most secure pastors and leaders, they recognize this, <clears throat> but it really is, but for the grace of God go I. Daily we need to spend time in the Word, not just to find a sermon, or a teaching, but we need to spend time in the Word because that's the primary way that God speaks to us. We need time in prayer. We need time to fellowship, and we need time with our families, and, you know, it all takes time, and it requires a certain amount of discipline, and the disciplines of God are good. And so we're going to be talking more about that as we go, but, you know, our relationship with God is so very important. I believe with all of my heart that God loves me. I don't know why he does, but he does. And I'm learning to love him more each day. And I'm learning to do that primarily by learning to love people I don't particularly like. <laughs> yeah, it's not the easiest thing to love people that seem to be unlovely in your life, but why do you think God sent them your way if it wasn't for the opportunity for you to learn to love at a deeper level? Well, anyway, these are just my thoughts, and I think leaders are fantastic. They're the, they have the, some of the most difficult work in the world to do, especially if you're a pastor in a church, because it's really hard to make sheep do what they're supposed to do. But anyway, it's the greatest call. It's a, it, it's a grace that God gives, and where he gives grace, he gives favor, and he, he helps to fulfill our lives as we fulfill the purpose for which God has called us. Hey, we'll talk more about this in our next session.